at what point do you charge higher rates? Because I think that's a very interesting conversation. Yeah, to get let's into, go into it. Then let's go there. <laughs> right. At okay. what point do you raise your fees? You raise your fees. Actually, the funny thing about raising fees that I figured out was you just got to raise them. You just raise them. And the moment you raise them, you, you, you sort of know what is the boundary. Like, like for example, um, when I figured out my rates, I knew that if I charged high to a certain amount, that my standards had to be good enough and I had to serve a certain kind of client. Because this is the one thing I figured out about charging high ticket. When you charge high ticket, you attract very different people. So for example, if let's say with my current skill set, I could go out and let's say charge 5,000 bucks to write a page, right? 5,000 bucks to write a page. I can actually go to another person and sell the exact same thing for 8,000. And they wouldn't even think, they won't even blink. They'll just say like, oh, you write for this company? Oh, I like your work. 8,000? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, uh, do you need it upfront or like 50-50? Okay, upfront? Okay, sure, they just pay it. Like they just don't think twice because it really depends on the company. So I find that, I still find it very heartbreaking when I hear a freelance writers who would write uh, Facebook posts or stuff like that for like 50 bucks, like 40 ringgit, 50 ringgit. It breaks my heart uh, because I know that a copywriter who's trained, they can easily charge 100 to 150 US dollars per email. Easily they can charge. That's the market rate for this kind of work, right? They can easily do that. And I think it's purely a matter of confidence. I think the biggest takeaway for anyone is you just say it with a straight face and you just ask for the price. And then if they cannot accept it, you move on to the next client. You just move on. Because of course, if you really need the money, you say yes. If you don't need, move on because there's always better opportunities that come. It's really a matter of self-confidence and it's a matter of practicing giving people that rate and believing you're worth that rate. Yeah, I definitely want to like echo that whole believing, right? Uh, it all starts with knowing that you, the value you're giving is really, really high, right? And especially, if, you know, for a copywriter, uh, like ultimately, it seems like we both have a thunderstorm going on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Zip, same zip code, I told you. Yeah. After what? Like, I think a whole week of no rain, like finally starting to mm -hmm. rain. But sorry, going going back to the, the point I was trying to make, um, you gotta believe you're worth it. And as a copywriter, you you are directly, re like, re like what you do and your performance is directly going to impact the company's top line, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, I just wanna add to that. Like, I understand the idea of pricing, the, the idea of believing, and ultimately, if you shift your price, then you probably serve a different clientele, right? Yeah. But I, I also wanna add in that there is always a market rate. Right, there is always a market yeah. buy sell in any in because we live in a capitalistic world, right? There is always a yeah. benchmark price. So I think for a lot of people, uh, I'm not in copywriting, but for a lot of people, when you're trying to price yourself or trying to price your skill, I always recommend people to price with the market, right? So if yeah. the market is charging at this price, then you can start there. Don't need to be cheaper, right? You can just start there. And that is your price. If people negotiate with you, then we talk about it. Like what you say, if you really need the money, then, you know, hey, I just take it. Lah, huh? But but the reality is pricing against the market is a good place to start. You know, that is that is uh, where where I where I, I see it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think since we're on this topic, I might as well just jump into, I just thought about three things. So I might as well go into it. So I noticed that there are three main ways um, when it comes to uh, figuring out your rates as a freelancer or as a creative. The first one you mentioned just now, which is your market, which is market rate. There are actually studies done on figuring out what is the market rate for certain things for certain industries. So if you just find that out for your country, or if you're even more ambitious, you find that out for the US market. So if let's say you're a graphic designer, how much does it cost to design a banner? Find out what is the US rate, and then you can charge that accordingly. Okay, the US rate, they, some of them even do studies to show that less than two years experience this much, more than two years experience this much, more than four years experience this much. So that's a very good barometer to start. The second thing you can do is figuring out your aspirational yearly rate. So for example, if let's say your goal is to make 10,000 US a month as a freelancer, if you times that over the course of a year, that's 120,000. So you just cross out the three zeros and that is your hourly rate. It's 120 US dollars an hour. That should be your hourly rate if you want to charge an hourly rate. The third form is, this is how most seven-figure consultants do this. It's called value-based pricing. So they would go into a company, 
the company will engage them first and they say, we have this problem. Um, our, we run a fast food company and a lot of people join our company and a lot of them always end up leaving. Turnover is extremely high, right? So I don't know how to fix this. That's why I engage you. And then they will come in and say, okay, I can create an orientation program. I can do a training program to make sure that whoever comes in will retain for at least an additional six months to a year. If I do that, how much is that worth to the company, right? Then they figure out, okay, over the span of three years, uh, this orientation program will last for three years. Over the span of three years, this will probably like, help save the company three million bucks. So then what would a consultant do? Okay, I'll charge you 300000 for this project. Even though, if you think in terms of hourly, this thing is probably costing them only 10000 If you go by hourly, if you go by value-based pricing, he can charge 300000 And some of these companies, they say, sure, 300000 to save $3 million, that's a no-brainer. Then they just pay him 300000 So that's the third form. That's the highest. That's the way you can charge the highest for your work. So those are the three, met- those are the three methods I will go about doing it. That I have, I'm working towards the third one, but I've already done the first two. Working towards the third one. Cool. Thanks for sharing. Hey, this is CS from More Money Malaysia. We are a platform dedicated to helping Malaysians like you make smart financial decisions. Um, and the way we do that is through providing you with actionable advice, such as the video you just saw, right? And But we're not here just to become your uh, intellectual entertainment. We really do want to see you succeed um, because we want to see you live that ultimate life that you've always dreamt of, right? And in order for us to do that, what we've decided to do is we want to help um, make it easier for you by providing different types of rewards throughout the months. So make sure you check out the description below, click on that link and see what type of reward you might be able to qualify for by taking action right now. And if you have any other questions about any of this, feel free to contact us wherever you find us. Take care.